Laptops have been around for a while now. They have been going well until recently when many companies such as Apple and Microsoft have been promoting tablets that can be converted into laptops with a keyboard. Microsoft has been doing it with the Surface Pro and Go series, while Apple has been doing it with the iPad Pro lineup. There are people who love these, but there are those who do not. Many people are confused on whether to buy a laptop or a tablet. This video is here to tell you the pros and cons of each, but don't worry, there's an answer to which one we highly recommend at the end, so stay tuned for that. Personally, I prefer a laptop for various reasons. However, you will be extremely biased if I gave my own take on this, so my friend who prefers an iPad will also be giving his take on the pros and cons of each type of device. After this message, you can help this channel by submitting entries of your own. More information towards the end of the video. Let's start off with my take on why I use a laptop. Let's talk about the good stuff first. Laptops have more variety for options. If you want a thin laptop, you can find one, a touch screen, you find one, and even if you want one to run games, there's one. The variety of laptops you can find when you go to a store is amazing. You can find the perfect laptop for you with just a bit of research. A perfect laptop also requires it to be fast. It must be fast enough to run applications smoothly and help you do most of your tasks with ease. Speed is a big issue on tablets. Tablets usually have lesser RAM. The iPad Pro has 6GB of RAM for all configurations and the Surface Pro and Go start at 4. Even if you upgrade a Surface Pro to have 16 and Go to have 8, you would have to spend a lot, which then just doesn't seem worth it. If you're going to be using that device for quite a few years, then 16GB is a good option. Another factor that affects speed is the processor and graphics card. The iPad Pro goes off well as long as you're not using graphically intensive applications due to its A12Z Bionic chipset and the 8-core Apple GPU. The Surface Pro has the Intel i5 and i7 processors, but it will again cost you a heavy buck. Now it's time for the Surface Go. Oh my god. It comes with two options, an Intel Core M3 and Intel Pentium 44. I won't even bother. Imagine saying this out loud. I have an Intel Pentium processor. I'm stressing on this a lot because many people will actually buy the Surface Go 2 since it is cheaper. You may think 11 inch screen is fine for you, but a bigger screen like a 13 inch will be better. The iPad Pro and Surface Go come in 11 and 10.5 inch screens respectively, and in my opinion, they are too small for an actual laptop. For the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, it doesn't have any issue on the screen size, but if you do not care about what I said earlier, you can go ahead and buy it. You may find the price reasonable, 500 US dollars for the Surface Go and 800 for the iPad Pro. But bear in mind, that is the price of the tablet alone. The keyboard will cost you another 100 if you want a Surface, or a whopping $300 for the magic keyboard with trackpad. A trackpad is necessary for a laptop. Trust me, a trackpad makes the device so much more useful when you're on the go. Picture this, you're sitting on a train and have some work to do. Will you be that annoying person trying to use a mouse and disturbing a lot of people? Nope. Wrapping up the positives, you get a good keyboard, as long as it's not the butterfly keys, and it is basically better. Until I talk about the cons. Most laptops are usually bulky. By the way, don't buy a $4,000 gaming laptop, it's not worth it. Laptops should be portable, so they must be light enough for you to carry it around, and thin so that it fits in your bag. Most budget laptops are not like that. There's always a trade-off. If you get both of that at a significantly cheap price, you probably won't have a good display or have a really, really bad processor. There are many options available. Yes, I know. I stated that as a positive. It can also become a bad thing easily. When you have too many options, you easily tend to be lazy and make mistakes. Portability is a huge challenge manufacturers are facing. It is very difficult to make laptops which are portable and have good specs, whilst keeping the price reasonable. This is a place where the iPad Pro and Surface series excel. Their devices are extremely lightweight and as I said earlier, portability is, uh, is their goal. Finding a super light laptop that ticks all their boxes is pretty hard and will cost you a lot. And that's pretty much all the negative aspects I can think of. Now let's see what my friend with the iPad's gotta say. Tab tops tablets and laptops combined. If you are an original member of the channel, then you would know that I reviewed the iPad quite a while ago, two months to be exact. After having the iPad for a little over two months, I clearly see both the pros and the cons for owning this. 
Before I wreck it with my complaints, let me begin with the pros of owning a tab top. Don't worry, we'll be talking about the Surface Pro too. Tab tops are portable. The iPad Pro lineup and the Surface Pro lineup focuses primarily on the slickness and the portability of their devices. Laptops don't even get me started. For most people, they're either too large or too heavy to carry. Yes, there are thin laptop models, but that comes with a catch. Price. Thin laptops are not cheap. Moreover, there's the pain of turning on a laptop, waiting for it to start, or the issue of shutting down the laptop. Yuck. So, what does this statement conclude? The tab tops are for people who are always on the go and can't afford to waste time or compromise weight. Number 2. The tab top market is easy to understand. Let me explain. Microsoft and Apple dominate the tab top market. With this in mind, let's look at the laptop market. Poof! HP, Lenovo, MacBook, Asus, Acer, Chromebooks and more. With thousands of models and millions of different specs to choose from, it's easier to find the perfect laptop for you. I won't argue about that. But if you're looking for devices that have been more widely used and highly reviewed, you might want to get a tab top as they've been more widely reviewed and more highly used, as there is a dedicated community for them. It's not a big advantage, but still, it's a noticeable increment. Number three, the OS. Surface users, you can skip this part. Now for those interested in the iPad Pro, do take note that the iPad OS is no joking matter. It's getting better day by day and since I've switched to the iPad Pro about 3 months ago, I haven't looked back since. The iPad OS is extremely simple to use and understand with no complicated steps. For example, if you're making a PowerPoint presentation, you can use Apple's drag and drop feature instead of the click, insert, going into files and blah blah blah. If you're not a tech savvy person, I strongly suggest starting off with the iPad Pro as it is very easy to get to grips with. Wrapping up the pros, the iPad Pro and Surface series are not for everyone, but for those looking for a sleek and smooth alternative that is easy to use on the go, the iPad Pro and Surface series are good for you, but that's just a scratch on the surface. Now let's get on to the disadvantages of getting a tab top. Number 1. Size. Oh my god, this annoys me a lot with my 11 inch iPad Pro. Tab tops are not big. Yes, the biggest models of the Surface Pro is 12.3 inches and the iPad Pro is 12.9 inches. Hahaha, <laughs> a standard laptop is 13 inches for god's sake, going up to even 16 inches. So if you want a big screen, think twice about getting a tab top. Number 2. Restrictions. This only applies to the iPad Pro. So Surface users, you're in luck as there are apps that only run on the Mac. Since the Surface Pro runs on Windows, no big issues. My take on this problem would be for Apple to allow a dual system feature for the iPad to run both iPad OS and Mac OS. However, this is extremely unlikely. But if you want to resort to jailbreaking to get a Mac OS on your iPad, by all means, go ahead. Number 3. Specs Yes, the iPad Pro and the Surface Pro don't have the best of specs, but that is supplemented by the fact that they're mostly light. If you are a heavy computer gamer, suggest not getting tab tops as they won't be as promising spec-wise as you think. Although the tablets don't have the best of specs, the iPad Pro is better than you think. The A12Z Bionic chip outclasses all middle-range laptops. Surface Pro, in my opinion, they are expensive and useless. With the Intel processors, you won't get your money's worth with the Surface Pro lineup. Let me explain later. Now on to disadvantage number 4. Price. Tab tops are a bit pricey. First you have to get the tablets and then the keyboard and other small additions such as pencils and screen protectors. Whereas with the laptop, it's just a matter of buying the laptops. However, this is a very subjective statement. If you feel like what you're paying is right for you, go ahead. Of course, there are more disadvantages, but these should be enough to give you a rough idea whether the tab tops are right for you. So let me answer a question. Should you be getting the iPad Pro or the Surface Pro? Short answer is the iPad Pro. Let me explain. Here is a little chart on the rough overview of the specs of these two tab tops. What they don't tell you is that the iPad Pro bullies the Surface Pro in terms of bezels, display, refresh rate, keyboards and pencils, battery life and value. However, the Surface Pro takes the W on ports and draws a tie with the iPad on performance. I think the answer is pretty clear. Still unsure? Then do check out our review on the iPad Pro. And that covers the segment on tab tops. Over to you, Shreyas. Ooh, nice one there. So what exactly is better? 
I won't waste your time. If you're a person who doesn't want to waste time, a tap top is for you. But if you're a person who just wants work done and needs good specs, get a laptop. And now, here's the part that you should be excited for. Have you ever had a great idea in mind, but were too nervous to post it somewhere? Well, no worries. We are extremely excited to announce our own viewer contribution program. You just have to send us your script for a video, and if you approve it, you will be credited and your idea will become a video on this channel. You just have to send your entries to techeck2 at gmail.com. Once again, techeck2 at gmail.com. More information in the video description and our social media, which you can find in the links below. So I hope you enjoyed this video, like if you did, subscribe if you want more of our content, make the right choice, and have a nice day ahead. For now, goodbye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, try watching some of our other videos. They are informative and they will help you in understanding and using the latest technology better. Be sure to subscribe as it really helps us out. Thank you.